be hosted by the Rwanda Ministry of Health and will take place um, here in Rwanda in Kigali in December of 2022. And we'll have throughout the day an opportunity to get more information on this um, on this conference. But it's really a unique platform for African leaders, for researchers, policy makers, community members, and other stakeholders to really discuss the increasing need uh, for resilience in the face of new crisis, the need for improving health approaches, uh, but also uh, the need to improve health outcomes in an equitable manner. So there's a new, there's a changing face of healthcare, and that we have seen with this pandemic. Um, it means that as the world has seen this global pandemic impact lives, impact livelihoods, it's really a time um, to reflect on the last sense, but really uh, also consider uh, what's coming ahead. So in the next several months, we have the opportunity to prepare and to shape this conference. Under the leadership of the co-chairs of this conference, in close collaboration with the Africa's party, we hope to be able to achieve that. Both in terms of what we want the audience and the people and the leaders and the community members to leave um, the room with, that's what we're starting with as we do this preparation. So it is one of the most exciting times to be here and preparing for this conference. And um, we know that the conference will have scientific panels, we will have, we'll have sessions, we'll have abstract driven um, sessions as well. Um, but what we'll be looking to see and in working in close collaboration with you all and on behalf of the local organizing committee is that we'll be able to put together um, in a unique place, of course, some biased plan <laughs> for Rwanda, but it's really um, a quite a unique place to be coming and to be um, reflecting on all these lessons. So I just wanted to share these uh, few words as we begin, just to say how exciting this time forward to working closely and um, to welcome you in Rwanda for the guests that have already. Um, I'll thank you. And uh, again, I look forward to working with you um, as part of the local organizing committee, but as part of the groups that are shaping this conference to be one of the most impactful events that we'll have on the continent this year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Noela Bigirimana, for your remarks. Our next speaker is um, Dr. Ndenbi Nikes, who serves as the Chief Science Advisor to the Director of Africa CDC, and who is going to provide remarks on the second conference on public health uh, in Africa. Uh, Dr. Nikes, please uh, have the stage and uh, the floor is yours. So um, uh, let me first uh, really uh, thank all of you. I think uh, Honorable Minister of Health, uh, Dr. Daniel Ngamje, I think the Director of Africa CDC, Dr. John Kengasong, um, the Deputy Director, Dr. Ahmed Uma, who is online, um, our lovely uh, uh, co-chairs for 2021-2022, um, um, Prof. Um, Senite, and uh, they, um, again, our lovely co-chairs, there are two, eh? um, Prof. Um, Agnes from the University of Global Health uh, Equity, the Deputy Director from uh, the Uh, distinguished experts and invited guests, members of the press, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. So I, I would like to keep my mask on for one reason, uh, because the minister raised a very good point 
for the theme of this conference, the pandemic is not over. So I just want to send a signal there that we still have to deal with COVID and the coaches have agreed on that. So good morning. So I see it's really this opportunity to express our proof. And thank you all for being here today. Uh, CHIA 2022 is organized by the African Union and the African CDC, uh, the African Centers for the and hosted by uh, the Minister, Minister of Health. This is a key um, day event. For participants to collaborate on research, innovations, and public uh, facilitating that this is the unique platform we really provide that uh, unique environment. It is with great excitement that the Africa Centers for Disease Control uh, really announces this second annual international conference on public health in Africa, which will take, a, take really a uh, place in uh, in Kigali. We have slightly tweaked within less than an hour the theme of this conference uh, to really reflect the current situation which is preparedness for future pandemic, Africa at the crossroads, which we're going to offer that unique platform that I've mentioned for African leaders, researchers, policymakers, and all stakeholders to share scientific findings and public health perspective and collaborate on research, uh, innovation, and public health across the continent. This second edition will uh, really meet the expectations for the Future Africa CDC mission, which is about strengthening Africa public health institutions, uh, capacities, capabilities, and partnerships to prevent, detect, and respond quickly and effectively to disease threat based on science, evidence-based policy, and data-driven intervention and programs. This is an abstract or scientific-driven conference where we're going to share content, real-life data with uh, all our delegates. We'll also look ahead and discuss how to come together to establish a new public health order and build a more resilient Africa. So it's clear that we must urgently elevate the innovation, our uh, innovative research coming out of Africa, and that's exactly what will happen during this uh, CPHI 20. So, uh, coaches, Prof. Agnes and Prof. Knight, to be sure that we meet the expectations of our delegate. With that, uh, thank you so much uh, for being uh, for your hospitality in, in, in Rwanda and Kigali. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nikes, for your remarks. Um, thank you for um uh reminding the public that uh dr johnson Hekasong will not be uh, online and be replaced by dr uma uh our next two speakers are the co-chairs of this uh conference on public health uh in africa respectively um professor senait Kiseha and Professor Agnes Vinagwaho. Um, Professor Senait is a globally uh, recognized leader in uh, reproductive health and rights and a lifelong gender champion. She currently serves as director of uh, global programs at the Sutra His Remarks. Merci, Julien. Je veux parler parce que l'Afrique est divisée. De CPIHA. 2021, donc 2021 et 2022. 
le directeur de Afrique CDC, qui est très, très bien représenté ici. Le député, le, le député directeur du CDC, Dr. Hamed, que nous allons entendre bientôt. Et en chef de CDC Afrique, Dr. Nikes. Le, les membres des comités scientifiques qui ont déjà été sélectionnés, le comité est déjà formé, de scientifiques rwandais et de scientifiques de toute l'Afrique. Afrique francophone, Afrique lusophone, Afrique arabophone. Les délégués d'Afrique CDC et aussi... Alors, je dois aller en arrière, hein. Et puis, l'estrade doit me suivre. Non, merci, j'ai assez, assez de micro comme ça. Alors, et les membres de la presse, bien sûr, mais avant ça aussi, euh, les membres de l'équipe locale qui ont déjà fait beaucoup pour préparer le succès de cette conférence à venir. Bonjour à tous. Et c'est avec plaisir que je me tiens ici devant vous à l'inauguration du lan enfin, au lancement de la conférence qui aura lieu en décembre de cette année et qui, est la, la, qui sera la deuxième conférence internationale. C'est très important. La première conférence a eu lieu virtuellement. Et a compris, sous le leadership de l'African Union, de la, de, de la, de African Union représentée par CDC Africa, qu'une telle conférence est clé pour des échanges, pour montrer, démontrer ce que l'Afrique a fait. On va toujours à Paris, New York, Londres, pour montrer les choses que l'on fait en Afrique, qu'on le monte en Afrique. Et que ça nous permet d'éduquer beaucoup plus d'Africains et de montrer comment l'Afrique doit et est en chemin pour avoir des secteurs de santé résilients, pour être préparé, comme le thème de cette conférence a été bien démontré par Julien et par Dr Niquez, être préparé pour de prochaines pandémies. Le monde a montré qu'il faut avoir des secteurs de santé résilients qui sont capables de continuer à, 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 à donner les soins habituels tout en faisant une réponse appropriée à n'importe quel danger, que ce soit une pandémie ou autre chose. Et il y a d'autres dangers qui arrivent, ce n'est pas le dernier. Donc j'exprime ma gratitude à l'Union africaine qui, à travers le CDC, organise cette conférence et au gouvernement rwandais qui, à, à travers le ministère de la Santé, co-organise, co-host, co own euh, 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 cette conférence. Et le français, on le mélange. Hein? Heureusement que je peux L'Africa s'est d'ici a fait. Et le gouvernement du Rwanda a fait. Nous a aidé à contenir cette pandémie et nous permet d'être ensemble ici et permet de concevoir une, une conférence qui sera mixte, avec beaucoup de participants en personne dans ces locaux et aussi beaucoup de participants virtuels. La première conférence, je vous ai dit, a été un succès, mais la conférence qui vient sera encore un plus grand succès parce que nous avons le temps de la préparer, nous avons le temps de le faire en sorte que ce soit une conférence qui soit engageante et une conférence qui réellement stimule les innovations recherche de solutions qui sont adaptées à notre contexte, chacun selon ses pays. Nous aurons des experts de toute l'Afrique qui viendront ici à Kigali partager ce qu'ils ont fait. Et ça, ça sera la deuxième conférence et ça sera sûrement un succès. So, J'appelle déjà toute l'Afrique scientifique, toute l'Afrique des secteurs santé à préparer 
de cette année. Merci beaucoup à tous. Merci à vous, euh, professeur Vinaguaro. Yes, let's uh, another round of applause. Uh, on fait remarquer la présence de uh, du professeur Mouvouni Mambo Claude, qui est directeur général du Centre biomédical du Rwanda. Vous êtes les bienvenus. Vous êtes les bienvenus. Vous Izateraga mu Rwanda ku tariki ya 13 kugeza ku 15 ukwezi ko kuboza uyu mwaka ikazitabirwa na bashakashatsi ikazitabirwa nabakora za politike zitandukanye zigamije kunoza no guteza imbere ubuzima rusange bw'abanyafrika u Rwanda rukaba rugiye kuyakira ubwo izabiba ku nshuro yayo ya kabiri kandi mukamutumye mwese cyo gihe uyu munsi gikorwa kiri kuba nicyo kuyitangaza no ku kumenyekanisha ko izaba then i would uh, uh, give the floor to professor senait i have already uh, shared uh, her bio the floor is yours professor Thank you. Thank you very much, moderator. Can you hear me? Uh, good morning, everyone, uh, excellencies, uh, members of the African Union, uh, ACDC uh, teams, members of the organizing committee, uh, guests and members of the press. Also would like to say Welcome to Kigali, to all of you, for those of you who've come uh, from out of town. I have the distinct honor um, of calling this beautiful land my home. So welcome, uh, Murakazeneza. <laughs> it is an enormous pleasure and honor to be here today to the launch of the second annual conference, international conference on public health in Africa. Here, is to many more of this and creating more of a continental platform. And to the leadership of Africa CDC, I want to make this incredible platform possible and to all of you in the room. Uh, my co-chair, Prof. Uh, Agnes Benagao and I know that this platform is evidence of what we can collectively achieve when we put our minds to it and decide to make space where none existed before. The pandemic, while it has caused deep pain and change challenges for people across the globe, that disrupt only build its own institutions, but also provide valuable input and frankly, hold to account the current global health priorities and practices. We have learned that the status quo of global health systems cannot continue as it is now. It is time for change and this is a sustainable continental shift. It's not going to be just holding conferences. We need to focus on building our continental institutions capacities, capabilities, and this will be then the 
that will bring our researchers, our innovators, our discoverers to share their data, their learnings, their experiences, um, and, and also opportunity for networking. The past couple of years have also shown us that whenever our national and regional systems are strained, the most impacted of society will always be, and most of the time will be, marginalized communities, including women and girls. That should inspire us to work even harder and design bolder African solutions centering the most marginalized in order to improve healthcare for all. To design forward-looking and equitable systems, we need to create platforms and institutions that foster collaboration and allow for active young experts and professionals. So this conference is an incredible opportunity to bring together the best and brightest of the continent. And I must emphasize that we have immense talent and human capacity in Africa. So we are creating the platform for them. And that will allow us to forge partnerships on research, innovation, and shape creative solutions to our challenges. I'm still in awe of what has been achieved through the inaugural conference, although it was virtual. The depth of conversations, the talent each in each of the panels, the commitments from our esteemed heads of states, and much more. Above all, it has changed how the world perceives what Africa and Africans can do in the global health space. So under the leadership of Africa CDC, and was co-hosting with the government of Rwanda, and everyone involved in bringing this next conference together. I'm certain that we will help unleash the potential of this platform to advance our continent's health system ensure, and ensure access to quality health services for all that is based on science, evidence, and data. Thank you all for being here, and we look forward for working with you. I also really would like to thank the local organizing committee for spearheading this effort. Of course, we do have an international scientific committee, but a lot of the weight is going to be on you, and we are there to support every step of the way. So thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sharif. Thank The pleasure is ours, Professor Sinait Viseha. Now, uh, our next speaker is the Deputy Director of Africa CDC, Dr. Ahmed Umar, who currently serves as the first Deputy Director at the Africa Center of uh, Disease Control and Prevention, Africa CDC and a specialized agency of the African Union. And in this capacity, he works closely with the governments and other partners to safeguard uh, the health and the well-being of African nations. Um, Dr. Umar, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Director of Ceremonies. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening uh, to all of us who have joined from wherever we are joining. It is uh, a pleasure to uh, be with you at this session today. And first, let me bring um, the greetings and apologies of uh, Dr. John Kengasong, the Director of Africa CDC, who, due to uh, the way the world is structured, is on another time zone and it's a uh, a very odd time uh, for him at this particular moment. Um, but uh, he is with us uh, completely in spirit. And, and in this way, I'm stepping in to pass a word of uh, a welcome uh, on his behalf and on behalf of Africa CDC uh, at this uh, launch today. Your Excellency, uh, the Honorable Minister of Health of Rwanda, uh, Dr. Daniel Ngamije, um, Your Excellencies, uh, Professor Agnes uh, Binaguaho and Professor Senet Fiseha, uh, the co-chairs um, of uh, uh, this uh, a conference for public health in Africa, both for 2021 and uh, 2022. All other protocols observed 
ladies and gentlemen, I would like to really express our um, um, very uh, utmost uh, gratitude to the people and the government of Rwanda for accepting to host um, the second conference of public health in Africa and the first one that is going to be in person. And December is not too far. Uh, in a very few months, we uh, shall be in Kigali uh, to um, participate at this important conference. So I really would encourage uh, all of us who can be able to make it to Rwanda later on this year in December, please come and come with a friend and a colleague so that we can all be able to make sure that, that um, uh, this African-owned, African-run um, conference of public health is a success. Secondly, I would like to congratulate the co-chairs, um, Senate and uh, Agnes, for taking up for a second year running this onerous task of ensuring that uh, the conference is uh, well structured, well organized, and uh, as many scientists and uh, members of the public as possible uh, are um, encouraged to participate. So to the two of you, we thank you from the very bottom of our hearts here at Africa CDC and the African Union for accepting to take up uh, this responsibility once again. I would also like to thank um, the African Union Commission leadership under uh, His Excellency, the Chairperson of the Commission, uh, Musa Faki Mohammed, uh, who have um, given Africa CDC full support in um, uh, putting together uh, many, many different initiatives, including this conference on public health uh, in Africa. Without their support, we will not have been able to manage uh, to put together the first conference, which was virtual, and uh, their full support for this second conference is really, really welcome. I would finally like to thank all of us who have made time to come today to this launch, and I would also like to thank all those of you who are um, engaged deeply in one way or the other in uh, putting together the conference, and we are looking forward to your efforts being realized in another successful meeting uh, at the end of this year. Africa has seen a lot of uh, different challenges during um, the pandemic. And out of those different challenges that we have seen, we are learning a lot of lessons, some of which we are hoping are going to be uh, presented during this conference. But two very big lessons we've learned that we want to be part of our planning and our implementation of health security agenda going forward are one, that when Africa comes together, great things happen. And this conference, the second edition, is a good example. So we need to continue to come together as Africans and as friends of Africa to not only initiate um, uh, different initiatives on the continent, but also to make sure that we deliver on them in a successful way. And this conference is a good example. This is one big lesson that we've learned. The second big lesson that we've learned during this pandemic is that it is us who are going to do what needs to be done. Even if we come together and we wait for someone else to do it for us, it is not going to happen. And um, this, again, conference is a good example where uh, uh, sons and daughters of Africa are coming together to make something actually happen. And I am looking forward in the coming days, the coming weeks and months and years uh, for Africans to continue to not only come together, but also to make things happen. Um, which brings me to a very important conversation that we need to have, uh, not only as Africans, but particularly those who are involved in the health security space. And that is Africa's new public health order. We must, we do not have a choice, we must ensure that this order is implemented effectively, swiftly, and collectively on the continent. We need to grow our institutions. Africa CDC is a good example of a young institution that has been provided with good support from within and outside of Africa and has shown that any African institution that is given the right leadership, that is given the right support, and is, that is provided with um, the space to be able to work will give good results. We need to do the same for the Africa Medicines Agency. We need to do the same for each and every one of the national level institutions that are dealing with health security on the continent. Let us strengthen 
our own institutions. We must, um, that's the second pillar of the new public health order, strengthen our health workforce. And when I say health workforce, I don't mean health workers, I mean all professional health security agenda here in Africa, whether it is um, uh, professionals within the health sector, within the legal sector, within the engineering sector, within the agricultural sector, within the security sector, education sector, doesn't matter. All of us who are contributing to health security on the continent, we need to be strengthened. And we need to strengthen our health workforce through building their capacity, through increasing their number, and through providing them with the right tools for them to be able to do the work. We have huge gaps in all aspects of our health workforce, and we need to continue to come together uh, to ensure that uh, we are building the next generation of leaders. And uh, we are really grateful for all those partners who have provided support for us to grow African leaders. And the Kofi Annan Global Health Leadership Program is a very good example of what Africa can be able to do when we put our minds together, when we bring our resources together, and we commit to be able to grow uh, the leadership uh, of tomorrow where public health is concerned. The third pillar of the new uh, public health order is local manufacturing. Ladies and gentlemen, as Africans, we are the only continent that still relies on other entities to tell us that um, the medication we are about to take is safe, that the gloves we are about to use are certified, that the masks we are about to wear are of good quality. It is unacceptable and we need to change that. And the only way to do um, are the changes that are required is to build the national regulatory authorities on the continent, to ensure that the African Medicines Agency is not only launched, but also functions effectively, and to ensure that we are taking responsibility for each and every health product that is going to be used here on the continent. The second way of doing this is to have local manufacturing actually happen. Many people are not happy when Africa says we want to manufacture our own health products, but their unhappiness should not be the barrier for us. Their unhappiness should be a motivation that um, we are doing the right thing. I call it the scream test. If you're doing something good and many people are screaming, then you are actually doing something good. If no one is screaming, then chances are you are not on the right path. For local manufacturing of each and every health product, from simple ones like masks to complex ones like vaccines, we are on the right track. Let us provide each other with the support that is needed. Let us ensure that the Partnership for African Vaccines Manufacturing that is delivered and delivered on time. And let us be prepared with our own um, local manufacturing of each and every item before the next pandemic comes, and it will come. Finally is partnerships. We need to build partnerships as we go on uh, improving the way in which um, we work on health security agenda here on the continent. We must start the partnership here at home with our own domestic resource mobilization. Where are our private sector? Where are our research institutions? Where are our educational institutions, particularly of higher learning? Where are our uh, business people? Where are our experts? Where are our leaders, our politicians and policymakers? We start that partnership on the continent, and then others can be able to come and support in a way that respects our priorities and in a way that actually delivers results in a timely manner. It is the only way that we are going to ensure that Africa's priorities are the ones that are being implemented here on the continent. At this conference in December of this year, I urge all of us, let us participate in whichever way. We already have co-chairs. We are going to have subcommittees that are going to be formed. We are going to have sessions that require presenters to present. We are going to have in-person networking that needs to happen in Kigali uh, in December. In every way that we can be able to contribute, let us contribute. And I assure you of Africa. CDC's commitment to make sure that this conference for public health in Africa, second edition, is not only successful, but it is going to be the yardstick by which any other public health conference is going to be measured. And that is going to happen only because you and I are going to have made our contributions optimally, efficiently, effectively, and in a timely manner. I thank you and congratulations to all of us 
for making sure that this launch is happening today. And I'm looking forward uh, to the conference in Kigali in December. I thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uma, for your remarks, for your keynote address. Allow me now to um, acknowledge um, our uh, funders for the CPHIA 2021, uh, who are represented in the room. Um, um, Susan Thompson Buffett Foundation, uh, we, rec we recognize also the African Union Commission, uh, representative of Africa CDC, uh, uh, the government, uh, government of Rwanda, who is uh, a key partner, and uh, Rwanda Biomedical Center. Uh, now, uh, our Our next, um, our next keynote address deliverer currently serves the people of Rwanda as the Minister of Health since February 2020, where he leads the development and execution of health uh, sector plan. Prior to these responsibilities, he worked as WHO consultant providing technical assistance to the same ministry he is now leading on the development of malaria and neglected tropical diseases, strategies, guidelines, norms, and standards. He was supporting and assisting to define program implementation, modalities, and providing assistance to conduct periodical programs, reviews, and resource mobilization. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's join our hands for Dr. Ngamije, Minister of Health. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, Africa CDC Deputy Director, representing uh, the Director, Dr. John Kengason, Co-Chairs, Professor Agnes Binaguaho and Professor Senait, Senior Government of Members of Media, Distinguished Ladies and Gentlemen, Good morning or good afternoon, depending where you are watching this uh, uh, event. I'm very pleased to participate at uh, this important event for the launch of the second International Conference on Public Health in Africa, one of the largest public health uh, events. The unprecedented COVID-19 pandemic has shown the vulnerability and the fragility of our health systems unless we continue to invest in research and innovation to be better prepared. Rwanda is driving research and innovation for health system, strengthening by establishing various bodies that complement each other and contribute to improving Rwanda's health research, including the Rwanda Food and Drug Authority, Rwanda Biomedical Center, Rwanda National Ethics Committees, and among others. The theme of this year conference Preparedness for Future Pandemics, Africa at Cross Roads, which is appropriate given Africa's social, cultural, economic, political, and structural challenges during the pandemic era. This calls for the long-term investment in research and health facility infrastructures, academics, strategic collaboration, and partnership among other for building resilient health systems that not only deal with emergency and pandemics, but also 
ensure continuity of essential health services and operational research to inform decision makers on public health matters. The second international conference on public health in Africa that uh, we are launching today is a unique platform that brings together African researchers, policymakers, and stakeholders to share their perspectives and research findings in public health while entering in the new era of increasing scientific collaboration and innovation across the continent. Africa needs to actively contribute in defining new public health order. I take this opportunity to commend Africa CDC, the co-chairs of the conference, and the entire scientific committee and organizing teams in planning this event, and would like to express the government of Rwanda's full commitment and dedication in taking the necessary preparedness, pre pre preparation measures to ensure successful CPHA events. We expect achievement of outcomes regarding advancing science on the continent, which is in the line with the Africa We Want agenda, stating that by 2063, we should be a continent whose development is driven by its people and based on the potential of the African people. Distinguished participants present here and those attending virtually, to conclude, it's my great pleasure to officially launch the second international conference on public health in Africa to be hosted in Kigali from 12 to 15th, 20, December 2022, and will be honored to welcome you. COVID-19 reminded us that uh, investing in resilient health system is investing in sustainable security of our countries. I wish to thank you very much and wish all of you fruitful deliberation today. I thank you so much. Thank you so much, Honorable Minister, for your remarks. At this time, I would uh, kindly invite you to uh, have a group photo before we proceed with the media brief. I would invite all the speakers, uh, Honorable Minister, our esteemed co-chairs, Professor Binagoho and Professor Senait, um, our Chair of Local Organizing Committee, Ms. Noela, Dr. Nikios, to come forward. DJ RBC Professor Muvunyi, and who is the chair of uh, our scientific committee, local scientific committee. Uh, if uh, by any mischance I forget about someone, please uh, remind me. Thank you so much for um, for everything. Maybe I was going to ask that the volume be loud. Now we are going to proceed with the press briefing. Um, 
nchuti zacu banyamakuru dufasha ku menyekanisha makuru ku banyarwanda no kubatura Rwanda twagira ngo tubamenyeshe ko uyu mwanya arumanye tujye kubaharira ubwo dusaba abagenzi bacu ku setting pano kuri pano the four chairs kuri pano haraza kuba hari professor binagwaho and professor senait na no era bigira imana ndetse na dr nikes from africa cdc yes and as they will be coming up from the minister to the committee this is the one of the Bahamagara to the Zakwe Mirada Ijihe Mobishora Mosekwana Mother says that I'm not your own. Um, so it's my utmost pleasure to invite once the setting is done. Uh, Professor Vina Gwendo, Professor Knight, Ms. Noela, and Dr. Nikiris to come forward and uh, receive uh, questions from the members of the press. Thank you.